What's up old school homies? Let's talk about grading rocks once again. In this video I kind of want to point out a wider perception rather than a more narrow perception on grading rocks because some people pick things up and put things down and you don't have to. You could just decide to stay somewhat neutral, not exactly neutral, but um, aware of the possibilities and also being aware that the possibilities could get bigger about the things that you think you're grading. What people are really grading is against other things that already exist. As a rock collector, you find new things all the time. And no two rocks are alike. No two areas that you collect rocks are alike. So each rock does have its own fingerprint, sort of like a snowflake. And what people do is they want to grade up and they want to grade down to put their rock into sort of a value. Now trying to put a dollar value on a rock, it's doable. I have a friend that owns a rock shop and that's just like one of those questions that I've really wanted a deep answer to. You know, over the years I've been bugging him about why does this rock cost this much and why is this rock so expensive and what's cool is that he writes the price of every rock right there on it and then so when you pick it up you sort of get that feeling like, is this going to be expensive? You know, it's it's almost like playing, is the price is right. Oh, I think that's going to be worth this. And then you pick it up and you look at it. And you're like, dang, that's cheap. I, I'll buy that. Or sometimes you're like, wow, that's way expensive. Why is this so expensive, you know? And then he'll say, well, that, you know, and then you, <laughs> you have to figure it out that it came from some faraway place or it's a really hard material or it's really high grade if it has a higher price. And it'll never be the same reason twice. It really won't. Like, <laughs> you could try to create a pattern, but you can't. You can but it takes many years, like my rock collector man has developed a talent for pricing rocks. Now ultimately, the price of the rock is going to be based on if anybody will buy it. The price will go down if it's been sitting on the shelf for many years, he'll give it away for pretty cheap. And that's what I do, I go and look for rocks that no one else has bought. Because sometimes maybe he did put too high of a price for the general public's perspective on something that is so rare that he has to explain it to you so they're not really looking for that. You know, that sort of stuff happens all the time. And that's why you want to stay wide with your scope of rock collecting. You don't want to get shallow. You don't want to grade things up, down, sideways. Um, this is too, too soft. This is... I need it to be really hard. Uh, um, <laughs> you you never get it all. And that's what you do. You, you end up being like, I want the most vibrant color of the, the hardest material. You might as well start collecting colored diamonds because, and that's fine. If you have the money for that, go ahead, do it. Like there's collectors on all levels and you don't have to say, just because somebody only collects high grade materials that they're narcissistic. There's nothing wrong with that. They just have a different price range. And it would be nice to get involved in colored diamonds or sphene or different different things that I would like to collect, but I can't. But that doesn't mean that I can't. It just means further down the line, maybe I will get a chance at one. Maybe it won't be a high grade one, but maybe it will. There's a good chance it will be a high grade one if I just keep the perspective that I can collect anything I want.